What's up guys, it's Brad from Light Architect. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can create a creepy ghost style horror effect using motion capture data as well as basic class simulation inside of Blender. This effect is super simple, but can be applied and adjusted in a lot of different ways for your various projects, depending on what you're trying to create. Anyways guys, without further ado, let's get started. Here we are inside of Blender. As usual, the first thing we're going to do is delete everything in our scene here. And I'm not going to be doing any 3D tracking in this tutorial. This is mostly just going to be the simulation process for cloth, as well as importing that motion capture data to move around under the sheet for the cloth simulation. So the first thing we're going to do is gather that motion capture data and import it into our scene. So I'm just going to go to Mixamo.com here, and I've just logged into Mixamo, and we're just going to choose some motion capture data that we want to work with. So you can choose any animation that you like. There are a lot of different good ones here. I think... So I'll just search for crawl here. We could use like a zombie crawl. This could be interesting. That actually could be a really awesome one to use with a sheet cloth simulation over our character. So we're gonna go with this, but obviously you can choose anything from the library here. A few things before we download this, you can adjust a few of the settings here. One of the main things you're going to want to check so you can animate this on your own and loop it is the in place option. So go ahead and select that. And now we can just animate this ourselves and loop the actual animation of the motion capture data. So this looks pretty good. Now I'll just go to download and we'll download it with skin and we'll download for 24 frames per second with an FBX format and go ahead and click on download here. And we'll go ahead and choose where to save it here. Just create a new folder here. We'll call this creepy ghost sheet tutorial. And then we'll just save this motion capture data in this folder like so. And now we have that motion capture data to work with and we can import it inside of Blender. So now we'll go back into Blender here, go to file, import, find FBX. And now we'll go to where we saved our motion capture data. So we have our zombie crawl FBX here. And one thing I want to do is select the automatic bone orientation option here. So go ahead and check that. And yeah, this should be pretty good. Go ahead and import it. And now as you can see here, we have our motion capture data for our character. Now you'll notice that our animation stops around frame 120 here. So what we can do in order to keep it going is we can just loop the animation. So select your armature with the motion capture data on it, then go to graph editor, make sure all of your different parts of the rig are selected here, and then go to channel, extrapolation mode, and then make cyclic. And now you can see our animation is looped over the course of our timeline. And you can see if we go back into 3D viewport mode, we can play through our scene and we'll actually continue after frame 120 and just continue looping. You can see how this could be useful. Now what we can do, if we wanted to actually animate this character, we could press Shift A, maybe add a empty to the scene, maybe a circle, rotate this on the X axis 90 degrees, and this will be like our master control for our character here. And then we'll select the armature and then shift and select our circle here, press Control P, and then parent it to this object. So now you can see if we play through our scene, we can actually animate our character over the course of our timeline with this empty here. So we will actually animate our character with this empty here, but before we do that, I want to show you guys how you can create your own character mesh rather than using the default one that Mixamo has imported into our scene here. So I'll go ahead and delete this really quick, as well as our uh, different joints there. So now we just have our armature in our scene. Now you could use the character mesh that Mixamo imported there for you, but there's some intersecting geometry there. And the way I'm going to show you guys will allow you to use any 3D mesh of your choice. So I just want to share with you guys how you can parent your own meshes to this armature here. So I'll select the armature, go to our object data property settings here, and then go to rest position. And now you can see this is our armature at its rest position. So we can now sculpt our own mesh or import a mesh of our choice and then parent it to this armature. So for the sake of this tutorial, I'm just going to create a custom mesh out of spheres and just create a little sphere for each of our bones here. So I'll go ahead and press shift A, go to mesh, UV sphere, and I'll just scale this down and I'll make this like the torso, like so. And I've actually done this in another one of our tutorials as well. But I'm just gonna kind of generally create a character with these uh, various primitives. So I'll go ahead and go into edit mode and press shift D with our vertices selected and grab this, move it for our head element, like so. And then I'll just duplicate our various spheres here to create the arms of our character where our armature bones are. 
and depending on how accurate you want to be you might want to import your own 3d model and kind of mold it around the armature or you can do what i'm doing right now and just use some basic primitives like the sphere here so i'm just kind of duplicating the mesh here and placing it where the different armature bones are so i'm going to go ahead and fast forward through this part but this is the general concept here and then i'll show you guys how to parent this mesh to the armature itself so that it will move accordingly All right, so now we have a basic little character here and we've lined it up fairly well to our bones here. I guess we need to move these a little bit back actually to line them up with the arm armature. So select a few of these here. I'm in proportional editing mode so everything kind of moves around together. So it's a little easier to dial it in here. But uh, yeah, this is the general concept. Our armatures are lining up fairly well here, but again, feel free to be more accurate with it. And I'll just go back and do object mode. And now we have our basic character and I will select our 3D character that we've comprised of our spheres here. I will rename it. We'll just call it character mesh. And now I'll select our character mess. I'll press command A, apply all transforms. And then I will press shift and select the armature and now press control P and parent this mesh with automatic weight to our armature. So go ahead and select that. And if you've done it correctly, then when you select your armature and go back into our pose position, you'll notice that our 3D character model should follow the armature that we've imported our motion capture into the scene with. And so now we can select this mesh by itself here and we can go into the physics properties tab and then we'll enable it as a collision object so that when we add our cloth into the scene, it will actually collide and interact with our moving character here. So you can play around with these settings if you like, but the default settings should work pretty well. So I would stick with these unless you get any issues issues with your claw simulation. So at this point, it's time to now create our claw simulation itself. And maybe before we do that, actually, I want to animate the empty controlling our entire mesh here. So I'll just go to frame one here and just drag our character kind of a little bit back here, press I and add a location, rotation and scale keyframe. And then I'll just go to frame maybe 100 for a total of four seconds. Then I'll just drag it up here like so, press I again, location, rotation, and scale. And let's take a look at what this is doing for us. So just a little kind of crawling animation here, which is quite nice. And then maybe I'll also go to our graph editor and go to channel extrapolation mode linear so that our character keeps moving past our animation keyframes. And now you can see it just interpolates those keyframes over the course of our entire timeline. And yeah, this should be pretty cool. So now it's time to actually create that cloth simulation. So let's get started. I'm just going to use a very basic plane for the base of our cloth, but feel free to use any manifold mesh that you'd like. So I'll just press shift A, add a plane to our scene and just add it above our character here. Gonna make it a little bit bigger than our character, like so. Just make it as close to the character as possible without actually touching any of the mesh from our character itself. So something like this should be pretty good. Maybe move it a little bit over. And now since we're going to make this a claw simulation, we do need more than four vertices. As you can see here, we just have four vertices comprising this plane here. So I'll go into edit mode here and select all of our vertices. Then I'll go to edge subdivide, and then we'll just subdivide this quite a few more times. So whenever you're creating a cloth or a soft body simulation or even rigid body simulations, you often need more vertices on your mesh so that simulation can be calculated accurately. Because really the simulation is going to be calculated for the vertices of the object rather than the flat planes itself. So we need lots of vertices here. I'm going to go ahead and subdivide it one more time, maybe a few more times here. Obviously, the more subdivisions you add, the more it's going to take up simulation time and processing power in your computer. But that's just kind of a trade off you need to deal with depending on your machine. So I might just I'll keep it fairly large here, but nothing too crazy. All right, something like this should be pretty decent. Not really detailed, but I think this should be good once we add a subdivision service modifier on top of this. So I'll go with this for now, go back into object mode. I'm going to relabel this sheet. And now let's enable cloth physics for this object. So before we do that, actually, I'll press command A and apply all transforms just so we have a more accurate simulation based on scale in our scene. I'll go to our physics properties tab and enable cloth physics for the sheet. Right off the bat, if we play through our scene, you'll actually see we have a pretty decent looking cloth simulation. So this is actually working pretty well. However, we are getting some issues here where it's falling through some of our mesh. So we need to dial in a few settings here to get rid of any glitches we might have. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do is I actually like to use some of the presets here. So you can see we have a variety of different cloth presets that we can choose from. And I'm going to just use the cotton version right here. 
which is just going to set some corresponding stiffness and damping values based on how cotton reacts in the real world. Now, one of the biggest things you can do to make your class simulation more accurate is to just increase the quality steps parameter right here. So right now it's at five. I might just increase this to 10. And a lot of the time you can just crank this up and it will give you a much more accurate result and get rid of some of the glitches that you might have depending on your simulation. Now, of course, the higher you put this, the more processing power you will need as well. So there's a little bit of a trade off there. All right, so this should be pretty good. One more thing I want to enable for our cloth physics is under collisions, I want to enable self collision. So in other words, we want the cloth to actually calculate collisions when it interacts with itself. So I'll go ahead and enable this. And another thing you can increase is the quality parameter of the collision itself. So I might just increase this to four just to make sure we don't get too many glitches based on our first bake here. And yeah, this is looking pretty good for a basic setup. Under cache, I'll change the end of our simulation time to maybe 150. And then I'll change the end of our timeline to 150 as well. And yeah, I'll go ahead and save our project real quick and save that. And right before we click bake, I do want to add a floor to our scene. So our sheet will actually interact with where the ground would be as well. So I'll go ahead and press shift A. We'll add a plan to our scene to scale this up a bit. And then I will enable collision physics for this plane. And I'll go into edit mode. And for a more accurate simulation, I'll just go to edge subdivide and subdivide this plane as well a few times just for the sake of accuracy. So this is looking pretty good. I'll select our cloth one more time. And I will scroll down to the cache tab here under our physics panel and click on bake all dynamics. And let's see what we get. All right, guys, so we are back and Blender has baked our cloth simulation and it's looking pretty cool here. You can sort of see the individual faces. So we could have subdivided our sheet mesh a little bit more for a little bit more accurate result. However, I am going to add a subdivision service modifier to clean up the look of our mesh a little bit and give it a little bit more of a smooth feel. Now, one thing I should mention when it comes to cloth simulation is you do often get a lot of glitches. So I did get sort of lucky for this specific simulation. I'm not seeing a lot of glitches in this specific case. However, I am noticing here for kind of scroll through, you'll notice that the hand of our character actually goes through our cloth mesh at a certain point. So sometimes you get glitches like this that happen and there are a variety of different options you have to try and troubleshoot why the issue is being caused. So a few things to consider here, just so you guys have something to work with if you're getting some more severe glitches compared to mine. One of the biggest things you can do just to kind of brute force your way through any glitches is to just increase the quality steps of the cloth system simulation itself. So you can see I've increased mine to 14 here. Uh, I've gone all the way up to 20 or 30 and that often gives us a better and more accurate result without any glitches. You can see here if I scroll my mouse over the setting, you can see that it makes the quality of the simulation steps much better. However, it also will need more processing power from your computer. So you can increase the quality steps. Another thing you can do is bring down the distance for your object collisions. So you can see I have mine at 0.0015 and by bringing this number lower, you're just going to get a more accurate result when it comes to the cloth colliding with other objects that are enabled as collision objects in your scene. And then the third thing regarding the actual cloth simulation itself is under self collisions, you can also decrease the distance required for self collision to work as well. So again, the lower you make this, the more accurate your cloth is going to interact with itself in your simulation. So those are three different things you can work with within the cloth simulation itself to kind of troubleshoot any glitches you might have. I do think the number one thing is probably the quality steps. And actually, I think I forgot to mention here, you can also increase the quality of your collisions as well. So this guy right here under collisions, you can increase this number as well. I think I increased this from five to 10. So that's one more thing you can play around with to get a little bit more accurate result. Finally, a few more troubleshooting tips if you're getting any issues regarding your animated character mesh. One thing that I've noticed that helps the cloth to interact with this object better in case you're getting any glitches is just increasing the thickness outer parameter here a little bit. I uh, increased mine a tiny bit and got a little bit better result. And yeah, I got a little bit better result when I did that. And then finally, a really weird one that I've also noticed works is sometimes Blender just needs you to scale up the scene a little bit. And I don't know if this is just a glitch in Blender, but I have noticed that sometimes if I just select all my objects and just scale it up by 
by two or three, I've noticed that the bigger the objects are, oftentimes the more accurate that simulation, assuming the transforms have been applied to each object in your scene. So just keep in mind that simulation can have those glitches. I'm going to put a list of possible glitches in the description below, as well as the troubleshooting solutions that I've personally used to get better results inside of Blender. So anyways, guys, we have a pretty cool cloth simulation here. Now let's kind of clean this up a bit and apply some textures to it as well to get our final result. So we'll go ahead and select our our class simulation sheet here and we'll go to the modifiers tab and you'll notice that we actually see the individual faces on our sheet here which is not ideal as we want it to look much more smooth like it's actual cloth so an easy way we can do this is just going here to our modifiers tab and just adding a very basic subdivision surface modifier and then I'll just increase the levels viewport to two and now we're getting a much nicer result and finally we'll just go ahead and go to object and then shade smooth and now this is looking much nicer nicer. And there you have it. That is how you can create a pretty awesome looking cloth simulation. To finish off this tutorial, let's just go ahead and add a material to our sheet here. So I'll go ahead and turn off subdivision surface for now, just so we can play back everything a bit easier. I'll select our sheet and go into our materials tab, add a new material, then I'll click on use nodes. I do want to switch our rendering engine to cycles and go back to our materials tab. And for our base color, I'm going to use a image here. And I have this image from textures.com that I'm going to use just kind of this dirty cloth image. So I'm going to unwrap this onto our sheet. So I've saved that on my computer. So I'll go ahead and find it here. It's just this guy right here. Open this image and I'll go ahead and select the UV option for our sheet in our material tab. We'll call this sheet material. And I'll go into edit mode and select all of the vertices on our sheet here. Press U and just smart UV project here. And we'll go into UV editing. And as you can see here, it's unwrapped our plane fairly nicely. Now I'll just scale our vertices on our texture here, like so. I'm gonna try to be pretty quick here with my materials just for the sake of this tutorial. So that should be pretty good. Go back into layout mode and check out what it's looking like. So we have this basic sheet here. If we go a little forward, this is looking pretty cool. Again, we haven't enabled subdivision surface yet, but I'm liking the general look here. So now to finish off, we'll just add an HDRI. So I'll go to our world properties tab. We'll add an environment texture, open up a basic HDRI into our scene like so. And now I'll go to our render properties tab, make our film transparent. And then I'll select our ground plane here and actually make this guy a little bit darker. So I'll add a new material here, make this guy a bit darker. I'll go to our object properties tab and I'll make this guy a shadow catcher. So now it's only going to render the shadows from our cloth here. And then since our character under our sheet here is just comprised of these rudimentary spheres here, I'm just going to actually turn off our character from being rendered as well as our armature. And now it's just kind of this ghost effect where we don't actually see the character under the cloth itself, but the cloth is moving. So it's just kind of a creepy vibe at this point, which could be a really interesting effect. So we could add a light to our scene as well. Maybe like a sun lamp, kind of give it a little edge light, strength, maybe 10, warm it up a little bit. And yeah, let's select our cloth here, re-enable our subdivision surface in viewport mode and give it a quick look. And there we have it. That's a pretty nice looking cloth simulation. I'll go ahead and render this out with a camera. So if you wanna render this out, all you have to do is just add a camera into your scene. So shift A, add a camera, choose a position for it. And then of course, under render properties, we can adjust our render settings. So I'll probably just render this guy, maybe 32 samples. I will enable denoising, advanced, enable that seed stopwatch for some noise variation. Uh, I will add some motion blur just for fun, maybe 0.15 on the shutter. And this is looking pretty good. I'll go to our output properties tab. Now we can choose where we want to save our render. So I'll go ahead and add this here. We'll add a new folder for it. We'll call it ghost cloth sim render except and yeah to render this out as a png sequence just go to render and render image and blender will export your final animation anyways guys that is it for this video i hope it was helpful as always feel free to leave a comment if you have any questions or suggestions in the comment section below let us know what you'd like to learn next on the channel subscribe if you're interested in more visual effects and simulation content and i'll see you next time